Okay, now um, before we start looking at tutorial question for today, uh, let's recap. There are some equation that we will look at later on. So the first one will be <clears throat> the first one will be this one. Okay. So if you you if the heat transfer happened with a convection, then your equation above, but you see the first equation above, uh, you need to add the QH. H means uh, the convection is happening. QH equal to H T minus T infinity. So T infinity is the fluid inside the pipe. And this one, the T over here is the temperature at the wall. OK, so you, you take the wall minus the fluid. OK, wall minus the fluid. Um, and then uh, if the normal conduction, normal conduction, you will get uh, this equation. OK, uh, you'll get KXX uh, times the T divided by X and so on. Yeah? So later we will look at this. OK, this two equation, OK, K, KXX and so on. OK, let's continue. Proceed to the tutorial question. OK, so there are a few important table for chapter seven. Uh, table 13.2, which is uh, will give you the thermal conductivity, which is a KXX or the K value for different material here. So uh, when you look at table 13.2, make sure you're looking at the right hand side, the unit SI K value rather than the imperial unit. OK, so this uh, you need to take note on this. Don't read the wrong number. And if there is a convection happen, then the convection H value will be given because according to table 13.3, they are given in range. So uh, we would like you to calculate in a very exact number. So the H value will be given in the SM. OK, so uh, there are seven steps. So first, determine the type. So normally we will draw a diagram and then give them a numbering. One, two, temperature one, temperature two. And then uh, if there is a difference of, uh, if there is a temperature equation, then we will, we will use a temperature equation. Then after that, we will, we will look at the temperature function if it's given. So T equal to N1, T1 plus N2, T2, and you write them in the matrix form. T equal to N, T in matrix form. So what is N form? N equal to 1 minus X divided by L, X divided by L, T is T1, T2, right, and so on. Step number three, you determine the temperature gradient, the heat flux gradient. So what is the temperature gradient? is this one g equal to bt what is b given by this one so you need to differentiate your temperature equation okay dn1 divided by x dn2 divided by x so you will get one over l one over l the first one is negative huh? so for heat flux you'll get qx equal to minus dg so the full the full equation for heat flux means you you, after you calculate the G matrix, you times the D again. What is D? D is the uh, material property matrix. Then you use the KXX, right? It's the KXX. Then these are the equation that uh, you will look at later on. So you will take the conductivity. The first, if you calculate the K matrix, there are two things you need to calculate. The first one is the conduction. The second one is the convection. You see the H, H means con, con, uh, convection. Then the one that without H is a conduction, right? Okay. So you have the conduction uh, matrix, KC is A, KXXL, 1 minus 1 minus 1, 1. So remember this form, okay? So later in tutorial, you will see we are using KC uh, to calculate the conduction part. 
And so a convection, we'll use KH equal to HPL divided by 6, 2, 1, 1, 2. And remember, the P here is the perimeter uh, of the... Uh, perimeter of the uh, shape contact with the fluid. For example, if this is a pipe, right? So pipe, we are given the diameter and so on. But what we are focusing on is the area that the hot fluid, the hot air or the hot water contact with. So let's say you're having a cylindrical body. So your perimeter P equal to pi R or pi D because 2R equal to diameter, okay, or pi D. So you just substitute inside here, P. So however, if you get a square uh, shape and the hot fluid is flowing into, uh, along the square pipe, then you are, you are substituting the A plus A plus A plus A. So your P for square, or for a, yeah for a square pipe your p will equal to 4a okay so this is the p okay so just take note on this one and read carefully when you come to exam read carefully the shape of the pipe okay so we like to play along uh, with the shape of the pipe so just read carefully right okay then if there is uh, exposed to the n is exposed, then we will calculate the khn by using this equation. And yeah, straight away, if the n is exposed, you calculate khn equal to you write this uh, you write this matrix out, then equal to ha 0, 0, 0, 001. You just need to substitute value for this matrix. H value will be given. A again, area of the pipe or the area contact by the fluid itself. Okay, it can be a loss of different kind of shape. Lah. Okay, the common one is a square and a circle. Okay. So, um, else, huh? This is a KHN. There's one more uh, convection force. If the question asks you to calculate convection force, the force, so you are using F. Uh, FHN equal to this one. Straight away, you this equation. H times temperature infinity means the fluid inside the pipe or the temperature inside the bar, we use a T infinity. Area is the area of the subject, 0, 1, okay, 0, 1. So from here, you can calculate the Fn. Then step four, you calculate the element of the matrix, you do superimpose. Uh, and then number five, you combine all the matrix, you get global. Then after that, you solve for all the remaining temperature and if need, you find the temperature gradient and heat flux. So each one of these have their own standard equation. So what you need to do is just substitute the value inside the equation. Okay, so let's look at this uh, example. So what you having, what you're seeing here is, uh, is a 1D uh, dimension problems. So we have a rod subject to temperature variation. And as you can see here, you only label that um, you're having a round object, a round pipe, okay, a round pipe. And on this diagram, you see it's an insulated parameter, means there's no conduction happen or the heat cannot release from the side of the pipe. So there's only one direction of the pipe, which is from here, then out to here. Okay. So it's just a round pipe. So it's a, it's like a triangle. Triangular pipe. Uh, this is if you see the the this di uh, this diagram, it's actually 
uh, is a technical diagram. So it gives you the cross section on the right hand side diagram. So yeah, so if you're seeing the same diagram, if you're seeing the same diagram, however, the cross section on the right hand side, it draw like this. It draw like this. And then it, 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 it fill up the gap here. I mean this one is a square pipe. Or square rod, something like that. Okay, so the, uh, it, the, this show you the cross section. All right. Uh, clear, huh, Brian? Yes, sir. All yes, right. Sir. So if you can see here, um, it already labeled for you. On the left-hand side is 100 degrees C. Then normally we need to find the temperature over here. So the we, we, we are given the uh, the label H, means there is an opening, there is a convection happen over N of here, and the temperature is infinity. Infinity means the the temperature of the rod itself. Uh, we have a length of 480 meter length. The L is here, right? And uh, one meter radius. So we are using the R here. We are given the R. Okay, so look at the statement of the problem. It asks you to determine the temperature distribution along the length of the rod. Uh, temperature at the left is 100 degrees C. And the free stream temperature is uh, 10 degrees C. So what mean by free stream? Free stream is here. So at the end there, it is 10 degrees C. So you can see that the temperature actually dropping from 10 de 100 degrees C drop to 10 degrees C. So there will be something happen inside the this rock here. So you're given the value of H equal to this one. You're given the KXX value. Uh, the value of H is typical for, uh, I tell you already, you're having a air convection problems. And even this, this, this question is very kind to you. He, having, he even explained what is KXX to you. KXX is the conductivity constant value. Okay, and you are using carbon steel. All right. All right. So let's. Let's look at the application of equation. How do we solve this kind of problem? And again, the steps is quite uh, is quite standard. Right? If you look at chapter seven uh, question, always the, the step always the same. All right. So the first one is the first step is you do the meshing part. You do the discretization. Means you you break this diagram into a certain section. In this case, we use four elements. Okay, we use four elements. So in exam, you'll be told to break into how many elements? Okay, in, in the exam, again, you'll be given a specific instruction to do discretization of the length. So if the, if, the, if the question asks you to break into three, then you take the total length divided by three. Okay, the total length divided by three if the exam mentioned three elements. If the, if the exam mentioned five elements, then you break into five and so on. So in this case, uh, we are showing you uh, one sample that we break into four. So four, you have the total length of four, eight, zero meter. So you break into four elements. Each element is uh, one, two, zero meter. And then you label, after you, you, you capture this diagram, you redraw the diagram into this form. So take note, huh? the exam will tell you you need to break into how many elements. Okay, uh, this why we tell you uh, break into how many elements because it will make us easy to mark your work because uh, we, if you have uh, you know, thousand students or more than hundred students, then it will be very headache for your lecturer to mark because each student, if the student use different uh, set of element, then there will be a uh, different uh, answer for that. However, the final answer was still the same. It's only that the process will be different. So take note on this. Huh? So it will be specific mentioned in the exam. So in this case, we use four elements. So in the in the uh, in your diagram, what you do is that you put in the temperature on the given, and then you label point one, two, three, four, five in sequence. Okay, point one, 
two, three, four, five. And then also you label element one, element two, element three, element four. So by having this process, I think you can recall and link up with what you learned previously. Uh, every time you break point one, two, three, four, five, because later on your K matrix, you're going to issue a ticket number and then you do superimpose and so on. So remember, the first steps is to do meshing or to do discretization, break your component into point one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Element one, two, three, four. So when you draw this one, you get certain points for your diagram. Huh? So diagram will cost you two marks minimum in exam. Okay, so just take note on that. Um, and in the question, it tells you that you are insulated around the body. So we know that in this case, we only have one direction of heat transfer. So you transfer from 100 degrees C to 10 degrees C at the end here. Okay, so from here, we didn't know the temperature of this one and we know the temperature of point number five. Okay. So this one you can extract from the question itself because the question uh, uh, tell you the free stream temperature, right? Sorry, the uh, uh, little, okay, let's look at, let's lose, do it slowly. So what you do, you just write the K matrix uh, equation like this. So in this case, we know that we have conduction happen. This one, we know that we have a convection happen. This is conduction. And every time we have an opening, we add one more uh, component to your equation. So this is the end opening. It's quite easy to solve uh, for chapter seven. Actually, it's a bonus question. Um, uh, I can say you don't need to think to solve this kind of question. You just look at the question and then if it tell you uh, there's opening, uh, then you add uh, this form. Normally you have a conduction. So if the question tell you there's no convection happen, then you don't need to write this one. If the end is sealed, then don't need this one, only have conduction. Okay, yeah. So uh, what you see equation over here in this slide is a standard uh, all scenario uh, equation. So it's safe in exam. You write this one in your as, uh, answer sheet. You write this equation out, uh, and you and we expect you to understand again. The first one you are referring to conduction. Second one you are referring to convection. Third one is when you have an end opening. Okay. Then the rest is just mathematics steps. Okay, make sure you understand what we're having here. Once you understand this equation, you can solve chapter seven question very easy. Okay, the rest is just mathematics procedure. All right, next we will calculate uh, K matrix for uh, all the all the uh, element. We have four element here, so we will do one by one and then we combine them. Uh, into a global uh, matrix. So I'm going to show you step by steps now. So for the first one, uh, okay. So you know that when you have a uh, conduction, so conduction, you can see how you calculate. How you calculate A? Because you are having a round, round, uh, round body. So round body, the A is pi R square. So just just uh, remember uh, this one, the this tutorial given you the radius. However, in exam, we like to confuse your uh, our student, not confuse lah, but we will we will try our best to 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 trap you, uh, just to test whether you're aware or not. Normally, we will not use radius; we will use diameter. We'll use diameter. So just take note on all this uh, strategy to test your awareness. Okay, so area, um, pi r square, 
the radius is 1, so k is given, k value is given, l, each element is 1, 2, 0 meter, so don't use the wrong one. Don't use the 4, uh, 4, 8, 0 because we are calculating element now for one element. So one element happen conduction. This one happen conduction. This one also happen conduction. This one also happen conduction. This one also happen conduction. Okay. Only you need to pay attention to this section. All right. So uh, I will give you the reference number. So for element that happening conduction process, you have, I mean this component, you have 0.5 watt eh, meter dot Celsius. Okay, so I mean the, the first parameter that you have is 0.5. Okay. Yeah. Substitute the first constant value, 0.5, bracket 1 minus 1 minus 1, 1. And then you, and then you see what happened to the equation here. There's a superscript 1 means you are referring to element 1. We did this one. So element 1, you don't have convection because it's insulated. Right? It's insulated, so heat cannot release. So there is no convection happen. And there is uh, no end here. There is no opening for element 1. So you don't need to calculate the end. Clear? So everyone uh, make sure you understand why we cancelling the, the two term for element 1. Okay. Yeah? Uh, Sue, you understand? So you able to capture? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah? Uh, so... Uh, so you do for element 2 and 3. Element 2 and 3 also same because the element 2 cannot release from the side and there is no opening for element 2 and element 3. So basically 2 and 3 will be the same equation. So you can write something like this in your answer. Okay, if you want to write the complete one also can, right? Because the answer is still same because uh, K matrix for 2 and 3 will be the same as 1. Okay. So far, any question from here? Atia, are you able to understand what you're trying to solve? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So we solve for K, 1, 2, 3 already. Next one, uh, a little bit complicated, uh, not a bit only la, for element 4, because element 4 was exposed to atmospheric and there's a convection happen at the end here. So, sir. Uh, sorry, uh, convection not happen. So it's only exposed to the end huh? it's because it's insulated over here. So the middle one you cancel for element four. Sir, hmm. can you go back to the previous slide? Mm, this one? So, so you said that, uh, oh, so element four is, uh, is element Ele one is exposed again your question element one and mm -hmm. element five there's no element five there, there's only no. four element yeah element one and element four are both exposed no if you if you look at only element one right so element one do it expose do, do it expose element one here don't right you don't expose right because it's connected yeah. to element two. So you don't have the convection, I uh, don't have the end here. You don't need to calculate the, 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 the end convection happening here. So it's conduction. Yeah, because if you, if you only cut out element one, what do you see? This, this is element one. So element one, there's no convection to the side and there's no Right, so no convection, so middle component you can uh, equal to zero, and then element one connected to connected to element two, so there is no open space here. There is no open space at the side here, so you don't need to calculate the the end convection. So you over see? here, why don't you say why don't you say 
similarly for element one, two, and three. Yeah, this one, this statement, no? Yes, because wait. Yeah, this is okay. what what I mean in just now. So you if you draw the element two, it's still the same. Element two, you cannot convert to the side. So you cancel the middle one. Also, it connected to element one and element three. So there's no opening. So you can cancel the end here. So element two, you write as this one also. Lah. But you change the superscript if you're mentioning about two. Did you get it, Brian? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So we look at element four. Uh. Element four is a little bit uh, just extra additional work for element four. So if you look at element four, the site is already sealed, already uh, insulated. So there's no convection to the site. I label as H. La. But the end is opening. So the heat is releasing to the atmospheric here. So it consider the end scenario. So there's a value for this equation here. And we cancel the middle one because the site the site is sealed. Okay. All right. Stop me uh, if you're not able to understand element four. What why why we only cancel one and not other? Uh? Okay. So your equation will, will end as the second equation that you see on the screen here. All right. And you substitute the value. For example, you change this equation to HA0001 and H value given A you can calculate and you can solve this equation. Okay. So, okay. So I substitute the value. For this one, just now you calculate a k x x divided by l, you get this one, and you given the h value, you given the a a, you calculate pi r square, and you get the matrix, right? So you get you have two metrics, so you have two metrics, and you just combine the value, this one plus this one, this one plus this one, this one plus this one, this one plus this one. So nothing complicated uh, over here, only uh, you need to be careful on the formula that you use, this one, okay? The generic equation, but you have to know on what condition you can cancel, on what condition you need to calculate, okay? So for element four, the answer we expected is the one that you see on the screen here, okay? So this step to this step is mathematics calculation, so I think don't don't problem on your side. Only careless mistake lah. Only careless mistake. All right. So any questions so far for this 4K value? Let me check Asma here already. Okay, Asma is here. All right. Any question, Asma? Asma, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Sir. You understand? Understand what we're talking about? Okay, good. All right. Now we have K1, K2, K3, K4. So again, um, if the question asks you to calculate element force, uh, element force, you use these three equations. So the first one is FQ. If there is a, uh, oh, there are four, four equations. Huh? So if there is a heat transfer Q, happen then you use the first equation fq equal to blah 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 okay this one is a standard equation important help you to calculate straight away we give you the final uh, uh, mathematics products already which is qal divided by 211 so this one is to calculate force huh? so calculate force what kind of force when you have a heat transfer q Okay, then you use the first equation. Second one, small q. When there is a small q, means heat flux. 
when the heat flux happen, you use Q star PL divided by 211. Then if, uh, if there is a convection force H, uh, you use H T infinity or the free stream uh, temperature PL divided by 211. Each one denote uh, very clear on the sub note here. If there is a heat transfer Q, uh, is a, uh, there's a Q value given, then you, 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 can, you can use this calculation. If there's more Q value given, uh, then you use this equation. If the H value given, and you need to find the force, then you use this equation. And if the force at the end, if the object is opening like what you see on the screen here, then you use this equation. Oh, there is, uh, okay, so the total forces that you have, you combine these three, one, two, three, plus the N. So in this case, in this case, there is no heat source. Okay, there is no uh, uranium, there is no uh, element that generate generating heat here. So this one you don't need to calculate because there's no heat source, there's no uranium, there's no uh, 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 thermal conduct, conduct uh, devices here. So Q, you don't need to calculate. And there's no heat flux. There's no Q, Q heat flux given in the question. So again, you don't need to calculate the second one. Um, there is no convection except this section because it was insulated. So there's no hitch happening to the um, uh, to the side. There's no hitch. Uh, there's no hitch happen to the side, only the end. So you only have this component. Okay, so you don't need to calculate this one. You only need to calculate this one. Okay, eh? so I just give you one example on one condition, how you use. What, in what case you need to use the first one to find the force? If you're given, let's say I have a rod. Huh? I have a rod. And I insert one heat element in the middle of the rod. I give you the value of Q. Then, you need to work then they, you can find the element force by using the first equation if there is a heating element inside the the bar or the beam or the or the rod and so on okay so the next one is that if you're given you the heat flux q star a given given value of or mention that there is a heat flux happen in the system, then you use second equation. I mean, first one plus second one, and there is no insulation layer. If the question just say that, oh, after a few years, the insulation layer was peeled off, what is the element force? Okay, so means that the first section, the question maybe give you a, a, a design question. Uh, what when, when you buy the, the when you buy the system it was insulated so after five years exposed to atmosphere and the insulation layer was peeled off what is the differences in element force so you need to include this this equation in your calculation because if you if you don't have insulation layer anymore there is a chance of convection happening to the site Okay, there's a chance of convection happen to the site without the insulation layer. And then if this one exposed to at the end was exposed, so you need to include one more equation to calculate the convection at the end, you use this one. So if you're given this diagram in the exam with the heating element, with the heat flux, with the uh, without the insulation layer, with the opening then you need to combine these four equations. This one, this one, the, uh, this one, plus this one. There are four 
element force you need to calculate. However, for this tutorial, because there is no heat source, so the first one you don't need. There is no heat flux. Uh, there is no. Uh, sorry, yeah. We, in this tutorial, we don't have heat source, so Q we don't need to calculate. There's no heat flux, so the second equation we, we don't need to use. And since we are, have insulated uh, around the body, around the rod, so we don't need to calculate the convection. However, in our example here, the end is opening, so we need to calculate the convection at the end. Okay, yeah? so bear this one in mind. So uh, these are all the side notes. So the first term, if you have a heat source, the value is positive. Heat source means you, you, you input the heat into the system, you have positive. If you have a sink, means uh, you, you withdraw energy from uh, the, the system. For example, a refrigerator, uh, you redraw heat, huh? then you have a negative sign. Uh, for the Q flux, uh, Q star, uh, heat flux positive if the uh, heat flux will go into the surface, right? The third one, when it's a convection, uh, heat transfer happen, then you use the third one, okay? Uh, so the third one, normally you look at the insulated layer. If Is there any insulated layer or not? Okay, if it's insulated, then you don't need to calculate. Uh. If it's open, exposed to atmosphere, then you need to include. Okay, so this one, the fourth one, normally when you have an open ended bar, then you need to use this one. Okay, okay, we're back to the slides here. So I label, I cancel all the four, uh, all the all the four equation on the left. Only left out the one on the right hand side. So I do the equation for you. So it's important in exam, you explain what happened to the force or element. And sometimes it's a bonus marks. So I will ask you, like, for example, what are the element force for element one? Answer is zero. You get two marks for just answer zero. What, what is the force, element force for element two? Answer zero, get another two marks. What is the force element for element three, answer is zero. Okay, because all element one, two, three is insulated. There is no heat heat source, and there is no opening, so everything is zero. However, okay, yeah. So in exam, if this kind of question come out, you actually you are getting three marks of six, you know. Each one gives you two marks, two marks, two marks. So three marks, six marks already. Full full question is twenty five marks per question. You get six marks like that. You just write zero you get six out of 25 it's quite a high high bonus mark there okay so uh, for element four we only have one because it's exposed to uh, the end is exposed so we only have one forces for element four h t infinity a zero one okay so standard huh? this formula is standard when you have an exposed uh, uh, and so you just substitute value h given temperature given because at point four it tell you the temperature at the end here is 10 degree c so you use the or the it tell you the free stream temperature is 10 degree c so you just substitute um uh, what else uh? Uh, area pi r square and so on uh, just be careful. Uh, you might ask whether I need to change this one to Kelvin or not. Okay, it depending on the H value that you use, huh? Because the H value is in the unit of. Let's go back to the question. The H value is in the unit of Celsius. What over meter square Celsius? So you you are using Celsius. Okay. So the rest, I will just show you the mathematics answer. We have clear all the concept of solving already. The rest is just substitution. So as you can see here, you press calculator, 
Your answer is in matrix form. Eh? Your answer is in matrix form. Uh, 0, 1, what is 0, what is 1? Zero, 0 here means point number 4. Uh, 1 here means point number 5. Take note. Eh? This one, why there's a 0 here? Because in the, I mean the top number here means uh, this point. Below is the second point of the element. Okay, so you assembly all the element. Huh? So the first one, you get this one. Second one, you get this one. Third one also this one. Uh, then you combine. What is different between two and three just now is the ticketing number. Okay, now. I don't have this one in my slides, but. I think you you are good enough to understand. Okay. Uh, you have material point five something. One minus one minus one one. So again, element one, you're having point one and point two. So this one is point one. Point two, point one, point two. Okay, so what happened to k of number two? Although the same value, element two, but the number is different. Uh, the ticketing number is different. Although it's still one minus one, minus one one. So if you look at element two, element two consists of point two and point three. So this Column is 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Okay. So, uh, Brian, what do you think K3 ticketing number should have? What? Yeah, what, what does this column mean? But what should you write with your pencil on top? To represent what point? Elementary. Elementary is a uh, three. Four. Three, four. Side also same. Three, four. Okay, you do the same for four. So element four, you get uh, the number just now. So element four actually combine four and five. So you write, you use your pencil to issue the ticketing number. So four, five, four, five. So you have uh, four matrix here with the different ticketing number. You combine them into a matrix. Okay. So I think you're smart enough and you're being trained since the first, uh, since the second, second chapter of this module. Um, I think you're expert already. Huh? Okay, so you when you put everything uh, f equal to k t. Uh, don't don't uh, subconsciously you write f equal to k d. Yeah, for chapter seven. From chapter two to chapter six, yes, you can use f equal to k d. This is for two to six. Uh, two to six. But. When it comes to chapter seven, this is temperature, yeah? not displacement anymore, because chapter seven is a heat transfer chapter. Take note on this. Huh? I've seen students, when they solve uh, chapter seven question, they still carry the D in the answer. So of course, I cannot give you mark if you use D to represent T for chapter seven question. Okay, yeah? Take note on this one. And then force here, as you can see here, force, you have force one at point one here. So you have F1 because it's mount to the wall there. They, they should be have a force over the, the side. And at the end there, the force at the end there, why you have, okay, this is force one, so. two, three, four, five, yes. So don't you have like Mr. Carried Forward? Miscalculate what? Mr. Carried Forward. 
uh, again, I, I don't understand what you're asking. Can you, you repeat? I'm, I'm saying during during your marking, don't you have like mistake carried forward? For example. Yeah. So uh, what mistake done by student? I see this one. They will write this one as D. Oh. Because they're doing doing this parking whatever. What if what if I'm trying to one and then I, I write two? Uh, for the numbering, actually, for, now the numbering is you use pencil. So basically, that one I, I I didn't really give you marks for that. The the pencil actually is to help you to park the number inside here. This is the the global matrix that you do parking just now. This is the capital K. So for example, the first one, the K matrix one. This is point one point two, right? So when you park your number, you're issuing one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So if you write the wrong one, of course you'll park the wrong number. Do you see the consequences? Yes. Yeah. So if you write the wrongly, of course I will see the mistakes when you come to global matrix later on. When I check your K matrix, I know you already done mistakes in the parking. I mean, you don't know how to how to park your number. Uh, means you don't understand how to do superimpose. So you lose mark for the superimpose and also the marks for final answer. Uh, okay, so always check your marking in your uh, in your in your exam answer that one. Okay, so it's important to write your pencil above and side for the matrix and then you check whether you park it correctly or not. Okay, yeah, so this is how you, why you get this one is 0.256 because it's one, one location. This is one, one. This is two, one. So two, one is this number. Okay. So how you get this one? Why there's a negative five two? This is four five. So this is four five with this one. So you get negative point five something over this location. The rest I do not write out because all are zero. Okay, there's no number there, so I will just blank it out. So in exam, don't blank like this, huh? You just need to write zero at that location. Okay. Okay. So just now I have explained. Why there is a value for F5 here? You already calculated uh, 5314.59 uh, over here. This one. Okay. So this is force, uh, force at number four. Uh, sorry, force at number five. Okay. Uh, just now I explained about the matrix here, right? This zero means point number four. This one here means point number five. So what does it mean if you convert into a normal language? It means this is F4, this is F5. So it means force at this point is zero. Force at this point is zero because 314 times zero gets zero. And force at point five, you take this number, 314 times one, you get 314. Get it, huh? Although here you have, you only seen F4, but you have a matrix 0, 1. So again, what mean by this, this location? This matrix, it means point number 1 at element 4. So mean, it means number 4 here. This one means point number 5. So that's why there are two numbers inside this, uh, this uh, matrix here. Okay, so... That's why there is a 314 point something for force number five. Okay, why this one zero? Why this one zero? Why this one zero? It is because when you calculate uh, the forces here, um, it's connected, right? It's connected, so you get zero. Okay, any question for these slides? Any question?
any one of you don't understand how to get this matrix again uh, the blank one is zero and uh, be careful writing your displacement or in this case is temperature it's a temperature change because chapter seven is more on heat transfer so you have temperature at point one until point five you have five point here okay always check your answer huh? all right okay so i will just uh, fill up the space here and then i tidy up because you have a plus number here and so on so at the end you get this form then the rest you just solve it accordingly now for example you know that Point one is temperature 100 degrees C. So you substitute 100 degrees C here. Okay, 100 degrees C there. And you can modify. Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to modify this equation very uh, slowly. Uh. So what happened if you substitute this one as, um, as 100 degrees C? Okay, so for the first one, uh, not first one, uh, we use the second, uh, we use the, we use the second one to build the equation. So, okay, hold on. Yeah. Okay, what is going to happen here is that, um, I manipulate the number at this row here. So as you can see, I actually, if you compare the top and bottom, I manipulate this number and this number, this number, this number, this number here. Okay, so how do I manipulate? I manipulate with, uh, equation so as you can see i calculate based on uh, uh, based on the assumption that because f1 we do not know okay so we do not know so we put zero uh, let me see here uh, okay uh, uh, let me put as okay we manipulate the first one this one and t because we know that t1 is 100 right t1 is 100 degree c so you can you can change the equation You can change matrix from F1 into 101, 0, 0, 0, 0. This one also 0, 0, 0, 0. Do you guys understand what we are trying to do? Because the we try to manipulate the matrix because one confirmed number is we know that the temperature at point one is 100 degrees C. So uh, we try to change the matrix information here, replace with temperature information. So the first equation here, we know one confirmed answer is 100 degrees C for temperature. So how do you get a uh, temperature equation? T1 equal to 100 degrees C. You take uh, 100 degrees C equal 1 times T1 plus zero times T2 and so on until zero times T5. Shall you understand what I'm trying to explain? You understand why suddenly this one become 100 and the rest is zero and this one is one? Uh, yes. Understand, I huh? believe so. Yeah. Uh, Sue, you understand? Brian, you understand? 
No. No, sir. Okay, I'll explain one more time huh, because this is important. Okay. Um, anyone have question on the first matrix here first? I explained just now how you get F equal to KT, right? This one is the matrix that you built just now. Okay. So we need to rewrite this equation because we don't know what is F1. We don't know what is false at point number one. However, we know one confirmed answer because we know that for point one, we know that the temperature one is 100 degrees C. What we're trying to do here is that we manipulate the matrix where we transform this equation. You know that F1 equal to this one is actually is the equation, right? This one times this one, this one times this one, plus this one times this one, plus this one times this one, and plus this one times this one. Okay, we know that from the above equation, you have one equation that you're not able to solve because we don't know F1 value. However, we have the second information will help us to rebuild the equation, uh, rebuild the matrix, which is T1 equal to 100 degrees C. So how do you build this equation from this matrix? Let's say, Okay, you have a blank matrix here. You have the blank matrix here. And you have T1, T2, T3, T4, T5. And you have something confirmed on the left, which is you have 100 degrees C on the left, the first number. So how do you get the matrix to arrive at T1 equal to 100 degrees C? This is one, right? How you get 100 degrees C for matrix? You write 100 degrees C equal to T equal to 1 plus a T1 times T1 plus 0 times T2 plus 0 times T3 plus 0 times T4 plus 0 times T5, you get the first equation for T1 equal to 100 degrees C. Ashmal, you understand what I'm trying to explain here? Yes, sir. Understand? So you understand? Can. Can, huh? Can. All right. Ryan, do you understand what I'm trying to do? Yes, sir. You you taking the key. Yeah, actually, we 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 just uh, rewrite the first row of the equation. Oh, okay. We just rewrite the matrix. We just change the one that I highlight here. This one. We don't want to. We don't want to use this equation anymore. We just substitute the first one with the t parameter. Because one one confirmed t parameter we know is hundred degrees C. So we rewrite the first row of this matrix. We write 100 degrees C for the force component there. Although this is false, but we change a little bit. We know one confirmed answer or one confirmed constant value is 100. And then we play around with the matrix to get T1 equal to 100 degrees C. So how to get T1 equal to 100 degrees C? So on the left, the answer is 100 equal how you get T1 in the multiplication of these two matrix. You take 1 times T1. There is no T2 here. So you put 0, T2 plus 0 times T3 plus 0 times T4 times 0 plus T5. Okay. So are you able to see the, the strategy with we're trying to solve here? Yes. Okay. So important, huh? I already explained how you get, why suddenly you can change the first row into 100 and then 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. 
Now I'm going to explain the second row. How do we change this one to all this zero here? Okay. So originally, you know that we have three zero here, so we're not going to touch the three zero. We're going to change the first one into zero. We're going to change this one into zero. We're going to change minus point two three point five two three six into zero. What are the strategy? Okay. Already done, huh? the first one already explained how to convert the first row of the matrix to become one zero 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 zero. And the, on the left, I changed the F1 to 100. I already explained this now. Okay, now I'm going to explain the second one. How you get this number? You just expand this equation. Zero, you put the second row, put them into equation like what you see on the screen here. Minus 0.5 times T1 plus second number 1.04 times T2. You get this one. Plus negative 0.52 times T3. You get this one. Zero times T4, zero. 0 times T5, 0. So we are getting this equation. So you're able to follow? You understand why this, how this one, this equation come up from this matrix? Mm, yes. Okay, yeah? So why there's a 0? Because on the left you see 0 here. And you're just actually extracting the second equation from the matrix. So you get minus 5, 2t1 plus 0.1t2 minus 0.5t3. Ryan, you understand? You understand how you get this second equation uh, from the matrix? Ryan, you okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Ashma, you okay? Yes, sir. All right. Good. So you all right, yeah? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So we continue with the second equation over here. You substitute the T1 value as 100 because we already know the value of uh, T1. So you substitute inside there. Minus 0.2 plus 100. Uh, Multiply 100 plus the rest. You then after that, you pull these products to the left. You pull this product to the left, you get 52.36. And here, your T1 becomes 0 already. 0 times T1 plus 1.0472 T2 minus 0.5236 T3. That's why you are seeing the new matrix equation over here. That's why this one from zero become 0.52, why, why 552.36? Because this one, this is on the left, left hand side of the matrix. Then why this one zero? Because there's no T1 in this equation. There's no T1 in this third equation you see on the screen here. So 0, T1. So 0 times T1 is 0. Then you continue using this one. 0 0.104 T2. So you see 0 0.0, uh, 1.04 T2. Plus negative 0.536 times T3. You get this one. And there's no T4. There's no T5. So there's a 0, 0 over here. So that's why this value changed to 0. This value changed to this value. Or in this case, it's so coincident this value doesn't change. And so coincident this one also doesn't change. Then this one you copy from the equation. This one also you copy from equation. 
Everyone clear on this one? Yes, clear. Okay. The rest is the solving mat uh, matrix. So we are a bit, uh, we go a bit long for today, first session. Okay. So if you look at this equation, uh, this matrix, the whole matrix, actually you are having five simultaneous equation. Five unknown there, T1, T2, T3, T4. So I, I will teach you how to use the online tools. Basically, you type this whole thing in the online tool. You move this one to the left. It become inverse matrix. So you use the online tools. You punch in this one, press the inverse, uh, copy the value back to the uh, matrix. Uh, type this one in matrix B. Uh, matrix A times matrix B, you get the answer for T1 until T5. Something like this on your screen. Okay, so I, I'm not giving you the final answer, but uh, at the end, you will find the temperature from T1 to T5. Everyone get it? So, sir, from that step, even if we don't show we don't show the working and we just get T1 equals to this two. No, you, you still need to write a, a, a normal. OK, let me clear it. You still need to write a normal a computers, computation steps. What you write is that, so you assume the whole thing here is K, right? So you write T1. T2, T3, T4, and T5. In your answer, I will expect you to rewrite this whole thing. And also the answer over here, let's say this is your, your answer. La. This one I write as A. La. So in your answer sheet, what I expected is that you will write K inverse times the A. Equal T one until T five. This is the answer that I expected. Then only you use the online. Use the online uh, matrix tool. You write the final answer T one until T five. Equal what? Do you get it, Brian? Don't miss these steps. Huh? You must write the, the step out in your answer sheet. Meaning you pull this the whole thing to the left. It becomes inverse matrix. Means you write the whole thing with the negative one at the corner. Then only you use the online tools to help you calculate. You get it? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so we stop here. We go for a short break. 